Hi everyone, it's me Shauna. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the medical aspect of Holtorum syndrome. Before we get going, if you could just give this video a like and subscribe. If you know anyone else who's interested in an explanation of what Holtorum syndrome is, feel free to share our video. So Holtorum syndrome, um, for short, uh, I put HOS on things. Holtorum syndrome is also known as the heart and hand syndrome. So in this video, we're going to talk about who we are, what Holtorum syndrome is, what causes Holtorum syndrome, common symptoms and signs, and different treatments. So first off, I'd like to introduce to you guys our family. So this is little Jude. Um, I'm in the white shirt. That's Dave, and that's Pandora. So what exactly is Holtorum syndrome? So Holtorum syndrome is a disease that's characterized by abnormalities of the hands, arms, shoulders, um, and heart issues. So most commonly, um, people with Holtorum syndrome are found to have physical abnormalities that include an absent thumb. A long thumb that looks more like a regular um, like a finger like your pointer finger and in some cases people do have webbed fingers shortened arms and absent bones there is a very large range of abnormalities that can occur with Holtorum syndrome so this here is just a visual for you guys to see the whole Dorum presentation. So what causes Holtorum syndrome? Holtorum syndrome is caused by a mutation in the TBX5 gene or one of the T-box genes. Uh, this gene is in charge of carrying the instructions that tell your cells how to build you when you're in the womb. During uh, baby's time in the womb, the TBX5 gene tells your cells how to build um, your arms, heart, shoulders, all that stuff. So this gene specifically can affect everything at the chest level of, bod of your body when your arms are outstretched like this. So common signs in the heart. So most commonly people will have ASDs, which is an atrial septal defect. That's a hole between the two upper chambers of the heart. A VSD, that's gonna be a hole or holes between the two bottom ventricles of the heart. And a couple others are holes in the aorta, conduction issues, that is the part of your heart that controls your heartbeats. Tachycardia, which is a fast heartbeat, bradycardia, which is a slow heartbeat, and then you can also have veins that are kind of put together differently. Physical signs again are missing thumb, long thumb, additional or missing fingers, webbed fingers, a clubbed wrist, shorter arms, bones missing from the arms, deformed clavicle bones, deformed shoulders, and loose joints. Those are just some of them. So as you guys can see here, it's kind of hard to see because I'm blocking it right now, but that is my left hand. I do not have a thumb on my left hand. And I kind of have a funky long thumb on my right hand. It doesn't completely look like a normal finger, um, but it is not shaped like a normal thumb. It also does not bend like normal. And this is my Uncle Bobby. Uh, he has four fingers on each hand, both of his arms are shortened. His left one's shorter than his right, and that is right before a surgery he had. And then that's Pandy and Jude when they were left. So this here is another diagram for you so you can see the bones that can be affected by the gene. Don't worry about this stuff here. We're just going to worry about this side here. So it can affect everything, your clavicle, scapula, humerus, radius, ulna, carpus, metacarpus, and phalanges. All 
All right, so these are just some pictures of my family here that I'm gonna show you guys. So the first picture is of my grandma and grandpa on my mother's side. My grandmother had Holtorum syndrome. She was absent radius in her left arm, so she could not flip her arm over. She did have thumbs on both hands, however, um, on her left hand, her thumb was more like mine. <clears throat> this picture, this next picture in the middle here is a picture of my mom and my stepfather, Craig. My mom has Holtorum syndrome also. She has um, normal length arms. She can flip her arms over like normal. Her major differences are in her hands. Um, her right hand is like mine and her left hand, she has a little thumb, um, but there's no bone in it and no muscle mass. So that's my Uncle Bobby. You've already seen a picture of him. That's his son, Jonathan, who does not have any signs or symptoms of Holtorum syndrome. So as of current, he has not been diagnosed with Holtorum syndrome. And this is me. You've already seen a little bit of what I have going on physically. Um, I also have sick or had sick sinus syndrome. That is why I was given a pacemaker. My heart beat gets really, really slow and my heart will stop. So um, they gave me a pacemaker before it caused any issues. And this is Pandora in her cute little Halloween costume. So Pandora was born with two ASDs and a VSD and a hole in her aorta. Uh, so far, those are working on closing. As of current, no surgeries are needed, but we are monitoring her. Um, as you can tell, her left arm, she really doesn't have an arm, so she has her sh uh, shoulder. And then right off of her shoulder is pretty much a wrist joint with her hand. She has three fingers on her left side. And then on the right side, she has a shortened arm. She does have her humerus she's absent radius and ulna and right off of her humerus where her elbow would be she has a wrist joint with her hand she has four fingers on that hand and her two fingers the one that would be your pointer finger and your middle finger are connected and then this is jude bug here jude is a lot like pandora except the major difference is on his left side he does have a shortened humerus Right off of his humerus is his wrist joint, and his hand has four fingers, and his pointer finger and middle finger on that hand are connected. And then on his right arm, he has a normal length humerus. He's absent radius and ulna, so that's the lower part of his arm. And then his hand comes right off where his elbow would be, and he has four working fingers on that hand. And the interesting thing about Pandora and Jude is Pandora can't bend her fingers like this. So she has to do everything like this um, when she's, she has a little bit, but she can't bend them all the way, but Jude can. So I found that really interesting um, how much it can really affect being able to bend, but they both do fantastic with tasks as I'm sure you guys have seen. And as you can see in my family, the representations of Holtorum syndrome can be very mild to very severe. And there is no way to tell how the gene is going to represent itself until it represents itself. So there are a lot of different treatments um, that help people who have Holtorum syndrome. There's physical therapy, occupational therapy, there's heart medications, surgeries for heart repair and function control, as well as hand modification. And then there's also something that I want to talk to you guys about called pre-implantation di genetic diagnosis. It's not a treatment, but it is something that can help you combat potentially transferring the gene onto your children if you have Holtorum syndrome. So first I want to talk to you a little bit about PT and OT. Um, so there's a difference between the two, though they tend to work with the same sort of exercises. So PT is specifically to work on muscle conditioning and strengthening. So for a Holt Orem patient, they put a lot of emphasis on dexterity, core strength, balance, and flexibility because someone with Holt Orem may have to do things with their feet, may have to bend a little bit more. And then the difference with OT is, is that they work specifically to incorporate the exercises to help a person learn how to navigate their environment and do everyday tasks. So tasks like that would be eating, dressing, going to the bathroom, taking a shower, cooking, driving, writing, and just making tasks overall easier to manage. 
And again, here's a picture of me with my pacemaker. Um, so there are surgeries that can repair ASDs and VSDs if the holes um, do not close or become worse. You can have a pacemaker put in if you're like me and you have either a fast heartbeat or uh, if you have a slow heartbeat, your, the pacemaker will help um, take care of that. And then there's another surgery. Um, we've opted out of this surgery for the kids, but it's called polycization surgery. And what that is, is it moves this finger on the hand without a thumb and turns it in and moves it down to kind of turn it into a thumb. So that way people can do this to grasp things. Um, but we decided not to do that. This is the last thing I wanna to talk to you about um, is kind of preventing your, um, preventing the gene transmission onto children. So with anyone who is planning on having kids who has holt orm syndrome, it's important to know that there is a 50-50 chance that you could transfer the gene onto your children. There's no telling whether or not the gene will go to them and you won't know that it has until sonogram appointments. So if you're really concerned about it and you want to try and keep that from happening, there is something called pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. It is not generally covered by health insurance, but there are ways you can get it covered. So this process is something that's combined with IVF, with a, which is in vitro fertilization. So they would harvest the eggs from the mom, and then the eggs would be fertilized. And then they wait till all the eggs are fertilized and all the eggs that take, they take the good eggs and then they test them to check for the mutation in the T, uh, of the TBX5 gene. And they keep all of them that don't have the gene and then they would implant those or save them for later use. And again, this is not usually covered by insurance. It is an option out there for you. I know that you can get it approved by insurance to be covered, provided the appropriate avenues are taken, and you never know, they may. Uh, you just have to look into it and decide if it's something that is right for you and your family. So that is where I'm going to end this video today. I hope you guys understood everything that I was explaining. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below. And again, uh, give this video a like and subscribe to our channel for more videos. And feel free to share this with anyone you know who has Holt-Oram Syndrome or if you know anyone who has questions about Holt-Oram Syndrome.